Martin Luther King Jr. said that a riot is the voice of the unheard. And in the wake of the George Floyd shooting, an unarmed black man pulled from his vehicle, manhandled by police while in handcuffs, filmed being killed on the street with a white officer's knee on his neck. A uniquely horrific, if not unique, murder that happens on a regular, regular basis, basis on the streets of America. And now, thousands upon thousands of Americans are being heard through riots like never before. That quote from Martin Luther King Jr. deserves to be put into context. And I don't mean the context of some of these pricks like Charlie Kirk coming out against the protesters saying, if you destroy, if you loot, if you if you damage property, you lose all credibility in protesting injustice. And I love the immediate Twitter response to that was, oh, really? So you're saying the Tea Party, as in the Boston Tea Party, was not legitimate, uh, really? And I'm not just talking about the context of... <laughs> Here's a list of all the things that white people have rioted over. If, if you would pull this up, this is our first link that you, that you've got there, CJ. From Tracy jumps to put jeans on. There's a tweet: Black people riot when their anger over being murdered and oppressed reaches a boiling point. Here are some fun reasons why white people have rioted. And th this is, yeah, <laughs> good comedy context. <laughs> Freaking white people. Uh, and then uh, just a fun series of headlines we're going to scroll through real quick here. An incomplete list of things Kentucky fans burned after losing to UNC. Kentucky carnage. Police use pepper spray to turn back thousands of rioting students after the Final Four basketball game. And their team won. CJ, get, get this tweet back up. You just scroll down on this. The, 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 these headlines are hilarious. Tennessee football riots. Photos, video. Lane Niffins leaving Tennessee causes fury. Tennessee football fans reacted bitterly last night to the news of Lane's departure to coach the USC Trojans. Just one year on the job as head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. James Madison U, block party, turns into a riot, 30 arrested. Riot breaks out at New Hampshire Pumpkin Festival. I imagine Uggs and lattes were involved. <laughs> From Slate, the 19, 1922 Straw Hat Riot was one of the weirdest crime sprees in American history. Now, here, just, just, just to, just to twist the knife all the way. Penn State riots after Paterno's ousting. The, the caption from our Twitter poster here: Tracy jumps to put jeans on because their sports coach left after he covered up child molestation. U.S. Open of surfing turns into riot. The moment that Woodstock 99 went up in flames. The strange story of the Cabbage Patch Kids riot of 1983. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. We could keep going with this. The next link, if you want to pull this up, CJ, is from Julio Rosas. And now we're seeing the riots in Minneapolis live tweeted. Things have escalated as Minneapolis police moved in and rioters are starting to throw bottles and other items at the cop cars, resulting in police responding with tear gas and pepper spray. I mean, this is this, this is the reality. CJ, can you pull up that second tweet, please? Uh, the second link uh, to Twitter, the third link I, that, that you have there. This is nuts just to see what is happening. And this is happening actually all over the United States right now. So CJ, if you could just scroll through some of these, give people a, a sense of, of, of what's happening on the ground in Minneapolis. 
And if you if you if you see the one from 13 hours ago on this account, the third precinct building is now on fire. Rioters are celebrating and posing for pictures of the flames. Now, when I heard this yesterday, I was actually I was pretty like dismissive. Uh, you know, ah, they, oh, they they we we heard hey they they've taken over. And, and lit it on fire. And I'm like, nah, yeah, okay, well, maybe, maybe someone jumped into a courtyard and set off some fireworks. No, that was the sideshow afterwards. Like, legit, they, they set fire to the building. And now, I, I, I can't wait to hear the full reports. Yes, the one you're on right there, CJ. This is the moment when Minneapolis police officers abandoned the third precinct building, rioters chased them as they left and continued to throw objects at the police vehicles. Whoa. Now, I'm really tempted here to say we gotta we gotta jump on board. We gotta like this is this is the people fighting back against the police state. Finally, this is this is how this is how we do it. And I gotta say, big props to our own Jim Freedom who's going to come on and show his footage from what was happening in Phoenix last night. Now, Jim, real quick, in case I missed it, the the highlights in Phoenix were that you had protesters destroying windows of police cars just yeah. and, and, and taillights and headlights and things like that. You had police in riot gear pushing back crowds with shields. And you had tear gas and pepper spray is that correct were there any other major flashpoints i i missed from what you experienced last night uh, a little bit of graffiti uh, with george floyd's name on the bus stops yeah and i and, yeah that was awesome actually like there's there's an la i would like I, I almost would say that's 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 another righteous campaign right now to so go go tag george floyd's name everywhere you know anywhere that a cop's gonna see it like oh yeah we know what's up we are not. Mm, yeah, we're not. We're not gonna let this one go. You know, is this is this that that? And we're, we're gonna come back to a lot of these issues on the show today. But see, when I see this, Jim, and, and as I understand, this is happening. Like, I mean, if it's happening in Phoenix, all right, Phoenix has a you know messed up. We I mean, we had, we had, you know Joe, Joe Arpaio as, as the county sheriff here for a long time. Police community relations are not great in Phoenix, but they're not the worst, not not by a long shot. And it's not about, I mean, it is a minority-based issue. A lot of it is, you know, stopping people from being Hispanic on the suspicion that they might be here on, illegally, if not unlawfully, of course. And my understanding is that these, these kinds of protests are happening all over the country. And I know that America would be better off if every police station burned to the ground tomorrow and police had to at least rebuild in order to get back to the level of terrorizing that they're at today. But, you know, I, I got to go back to a point that I've heard Arvin Borja make so eloquently so many times is that if you got rid of this government today, this culture would produce the same government tomorrow. Now, I totally disagree with that statement. Not totally. There's a really important point in there because right now government is so overgrown that if you got rid of it and forced the people to start over, we'd end up with a lot less government. Obviously, we'd see if you yeah, but yeah, the, it would be a reflection of the current paradigm, the way that today's government experience of humanity throughout the world is a reflection of our current paradigm. So, one of the problems with riots and protests of a violent and angry confrontational nature is that although they are calling attention to an important issue that will change the paradigm and is probably a, a huge net positive, it also entrenches the opposition. 
In reality, we don't destroy the enemy. That's not how humanity works. That's not how politics works. That's not how reality works. We win by bringing the most people to our side. We win by making the most friends, not pushing people away. We win by asserting our rights. But you don't have a right to destroy somebody else's property, obviously. When it's a police property, that's a different proposition, of course. And that's why it's so tempting for me to say, yes, let's get behind this. Let's, let's push that button. Let's burn all the police stations to the ground. But that's going to entrench the opposition here. Which is why I would actually turn to that quote from Martin Luther King. Dr. King, and put it in context. He had always said that his path to the promised land would be through nonviolence. As he said, again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force, which I believe is a reference to what Gandhi referred to as Satyagraha. Three years later, in 1966, Dr. King was being interviewed by Mike Wallace. And this was after a summer of violence, race riots across the country. And even in the civil rights movement, the rifts were widening. Stokely Carmichael, demanded that the movement part from the ways of Dr. King and his gospel of nonviolence. And Dr. King told Mr. Wallace, I contend that the cry of black power is at bottom a reaction to the reluctance of white power to make the kind of changes necessary to make justice a reality or the Negro. I think that we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. And I would remind you of one more quote just uh, before his assassination. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And I understand. And I saw this, you know, when I saw Jim's video last night, like, why, why, like, you know, are, are, are these people going to, if, if, if the police weren't there, would they have just gone and smashed a few cop car windows and gone on their route and kind of dispersed and gone home? The first confrontation last night in Phoenix, correct me if I'm wrong, was at that corner where we were just a month ago for the end, the shutdown protests, the reopen Arizona demonstration. It was at that corner where I tried to hug a cop and got that the elbow bump instead. And I, was, I had my bandana and, and he had his full mask on. It was right there. And it was because cop cars were parked there, right? And the cops came out in riot gear to defend the vehicles. And a line formed. And of all the protesters, they came up and they got their fell. They got to yell right at the cops, right in their faces. But that's not anything more than popping a boil at best. And I don't think that's even healthy or, or productive or, you know, and, and I, like I said yesterday, far be it for me sitting over here, privileged, you know, Jewish white dude, telling black people how to protest. No, no, that's not it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to cross that line. But I do want to point out that 
Dr. King was never on board for anything like this. No. The path to justice must be nonviolent. And in times like this, when I see an issue like this that I know, I know is going to be manipulated, it's going to be made divisive. I'm sorry. I feel like I want to speak on behalf of my parents' generation of old white people who are seeing this shit on the news right now while I am on the side of the black people in the streets, not the people calling for more police or more government protection. This isn't working. Sorry. It's a start. And I, I remain more confident than ever in localization is the answer here. Taking governments apart from the top down, getting them down to the community level. If the only police that we have are there to actually serve their communities because they're only truly accountable to their communities, all these problems go away. All of them. We don't have to argue nationally. We don't even have to fight at this monstrosity of a city level. Humans weren't meant to live this close together, packed into piles this big in the first place. This is insane. That Getting to the core principle of libertarianism, of ethics, of volunteerism, which is what you are all crying for and, and asking for justice and demanding it and standing up for it. Cannot be had when we are all forced into a centralized system. When MLK said, riots are the voice of the unheard. It's tempting now to hear that and think, well, we are all unheard in this system of lies and bullshit foisted on us by the duopoly. Let us all rise up and burn down all the police stations in America. But that's not even what MLK was saying. It was an acknowledgement of the reality. And I have to say, in a sense, black people are a step ahead of white people here in the sense that we are all so unheard. At least somebody's trying right now. But MLK would not have said that this is the way to be heard. At least not the violent or the angry or even the confrontational part. All right, confrontation through nonviolence. Yes, you would have endorsed that 100%. So what am I getting at here? What, what, what's really the point of all of this? So many third rails to try not to touch right now on all of these sensitive issues. If the goal is to be heard, then this is one way to be heard. But there are better ways. And I don't think MLK ever said that the goal was to be heard. The goal is justice. And right now, a system that doesn't listen, that is designed to exploit, to protect murderers behind badges, justice is not going to come from being heard by this evil entity. It comes from changing the way we live, not paying taxes, not talking to cops, asserting your rights. What actually leads to change and reform? I mean, heck, just self-driving cars. I know you go, wait, well, how did you bring that into this? Well, about half of interactions with police in the United States, including the one that led to George Floyd's death, um, from traffic stops. Well, you can't pull people over if they're not driving their own cars. 
just getting government out of the way of implementing this technology. And I only use this as an example. I'm not saying this is the answer, but let us innovate away from dependence on the state. I was reminded today of the story of Justine Damond, who was killed by a Somali American police officer in Minneapolis years ago. Casual encounter. She was trying to get their attention in a car because she had called after calling 911 to get a response to what she thought was an attack. And a trigger happy cop just shot her dead right there on the street by accident. He got 12 and a half years. I think we've come a ways now. I think the officers enjoy George Floyd's death are not going to escape accountability. And maybe it's because of protests. Maybe it's because of riots. But there's a longer term goal of justice. And I think as Martin Luther King Jr. would sum it up better than I ever could. Keep your eye on the promised land.